The age of man is over. Even now, Earth chokes on its final breath. Men and women run for their lives, begging for salvation for themselves, their families, their world. The end war has come, and on this battleground between angels and demons there is no escape. A creature stirs amid the mortal wreckage. He wears the shape of a man, but he is something far more ancient. He has no interest in this world. He cares only for the law, the ancient law. When the seals are broken, four horsemen will ride forth to... <coughs> oh, God, how does Christian Bale do that? Ow, my throat genuinely hurts. Where was I? Ah, yes. When the seals are broken, four horsemen will ride forth to restore the balance. He brings neither peace nor salvation. He is war made flesh. I mean, the game came with a comic. What else did you think the post-game reading for Darksiders was going to be? Darksiders the Graphic Adventure is a prequel to the first Darksiders game. It's a little short, but it does actually help sort out the backstory, which was something I was eager to find out while I played. Well, actually, full disclosure, I'm still playing it now. But I'm getting a little too worried about making a video when I should just be playing it and enjoying it, so there you go. No more Darksiders videos for the foreseeable future, I'm afraid. One thing I found interesting, and I'm realising I say that a lot when I'm doing book reviews, is that the horsemen aren't the same as the biblical ones. Instead of death, war, famine and pestilence, we've got death, war, fury and strife. Apparently their names are just names, they're not like the anthropomorphic personifications of them. From what I've seen, each Darksiders game is going to focus on a different horseman, so war is the first one, death is the second one, the upcoming Darksiders 3 is going to have Fury as the main character, and then presumably if they make fourth, Strife's going to be the boss. I really love their design. Despite the short length of the comic, we get just enough detail in what little lines they have to get what their personalities. War's angry and rebellious, and kind of annoys me because of that. Death is the leader, doesn't take any shit from his siblings. Fury is cautious, and Strife is the peacemaker, and kind of a cocky bastard. Despite coming out in 2007, this comic's got the same tone as as the games. Gritty 90s grimdark fantasy comic that runs purely on rule of cool. I mean, it's supposed to be set far before time or something like that, but Strife is using two semi-automatic pistols. And the massive gauntlet War's wearing? That's a replacement for the arm that his brother chopped off after he went rogue for... some reason? Actually, can I just take a tangent here? I hate the Horseman of War. He's just a whiny little brat. He goes rogue for some reason in the comic. He just seems to be being needlessly rude and needlessly edgy and rebellious to people. I don't know, maybe he's going through a phase. There's not a lot of pages to explain it, so maybe there is a legitimate reason, but from what I can see, he just rebelled because he wanted to. It felt like an excuse to just show O3 of the Horsemen wailing on war to show how strong he is. The second half of the comic deals with the Horsemen actually doing some enforcing for the Charred Council, as we're informed is their main job throughout the game, but we never really see them do it. Abaddon is planning for a war, and I've got a feeling that I accidentally spoiled something for myself while reading it, but I'm not 100% sure. Then the Horsemen show up to Samael, you know, the bloke who gives you any missions in the game. He's biding his time, waiting for his boss to die, and the Horsemen, all four of them, show up just to remind him to continue to bide his time until his boss dies. Then they move on. Start and end of the comic are basically the first segment of the first level, but with the Watcher watching from afar. But, you know, it's a nice little framing device. There's honestly not a lot else to say. I mean, Ludo Lullaby, the artist, he's phenomenal. There's some really good images and we get the scale and size of everything really well. It's also very close to the style of the game. It's very short. But to make up for it, the comic tie-in for Darksiders 2 is a mini-series. I might do a review of that if I get my hands on it, but it's probably not going to be for post-game reading, as there's already a book I've got planned for post-game reading for Darksiders 2, if I get to it. I got my copy of this comic free with Darksiders, but I didn't get it directly through Steam. I had to run the installer that was in the game files that I downloaded through Steam, and then the comic and the soundtrack added themselves to my computer, 
So I think you might need the game installed to read it. I'm honestly not sure. Anywho, if you've got it, give it a read. It won't take you long. The art's phenomenal. I've got a feeling I spoiled something for myself while reading it, so it might be best to wait until you finish playing the game and then read it, but I'm not 100% sure, unlike what I did. Yeah, that's right. Post-game reading is fraudulent advertising. This is concurrent game reading. Hope you enjoyed that. If you want to watch the How Not to Play Darksiders, go click there. And if you want to watch some more post-game reading, go click there. Click on one of them. Just one of them. Do it for me. Please.